Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. We are sat side by side this week. Isn't that nice? A slight change. There's uh, no video of us, even though um, we are still uploading this to YouTube and, and Facebook. Um, so you'll be seeing things on screen, but you'll be hearing us. Um, much easier set up. So we're just sitting at the table, dining room table, and having a nice chat in person. The first podcast we've done in person for a long time. Yeah, it is. Mm, nice. Long time. So how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing very well, as you know, and you can see. <laughs> <laughs> no, doing very well, Steve. Lovely to have you um, with us for a few days. Yeah, it's nice to be down. Um, we've come down uh, at the beginning of Broadstairs Folk Week, so it's rather busy <laughs> in Broadstairs, but it's really good. Um, it's a really good time to come down. So it's uh, it's nice to see it full of people, lots of people on the beach. The weather's good. So it's all, all really nice, isn't it? It is, yes. You're going to enjoy the next couple of days uh, because it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, Folk mm. Week. Mm. Bigger and better than ever. Lovely stuff. So we've had uh, a couple of... Uh, emails that have come through in the last week that uh, we thought we'd take an opportunity to talk about and um, so we're going to help a couple of our students with their pictures and dad's going to offer his advice this week um, so let's talk about the first one uh, so we'll pop the picture up on screen for you now and this is uh, a picture that's come from Barry a photograph that he's looking to draw and he says, hi, Stephen Collin, hope you both keep him well. I'm wondering if you can help me. I'm really struggling to get this cat's fur colour. I'm drawing this for a friend and I'm using the methods you taught me. Um, do I need any ochre colours? Um, it also looks like it has a blue tint in it. I'm not sure what pencils I need to use for the fur. So I'll pop the picture up on screen, Dad, for you to have a look at. Uh, this gorgeous little putty cat. Um, what's your instincts tell you in terms of colours that you'd pick for this one? Well, one of the things that uh, you pointed out and Barry pointed out is that uh, does he need ochre? Well, not really, no, but there are there are um, colours that um, would be advantageous, I would say, to add to the inevitable greys and blacks that's been going in. Now, I would certainly start the ball rolling here with the grey. If you look at the area running the nose, you can see that it's grey. And that grey speaks to me as being the cool grey, which would be 230. 230, 233, those two colours uh, would go to make that up. So you start with 230 and then you would add a 233. Now, what do you do with the rest of the colour? You've got to have a, a, a base colour there that works. And I would suggest that you use a dark grey. If you're only restricted to Faber, and we don't know this for sure, then you've got to use um, something like a 175 would be a good choice here. But this is where the ochre bit comes in. 175 on its own wouldn't give you that tone. But if you mix 175 with a little 169, that would give you that tone. Oh, really? Mm. You put the, obviously you put the 175 on first, so you're looking at the two greys that would go on, then you're looking at the 175 that would go on, then the 169 could be added. Now the important thing to remember there, the 169 is a very fierce colour. If you used it on its own, it wouldn't work. But here, it would work. You'd add, carefully add that to the um, mix, and then you use the black. Interesting. And those, and then you'd have to play with the colour. It's not going to be an easy job. I can tell you that. Black cats are always hard, but this is this is the colour that I would think would work quite well. Now there is a kind of mauvey tint to that as well. Uh, if you if you move up to the ear, both ears, you've got that again. You've got that mauvey tint. 169 again could be used there, but it may be uh, advantageous to use another colour, something like 194 is a colour that springs to mind, because that's got a mauvey, sort of almost violety look to and it. It's dark, isn't it? Mm. Uh, 194 is red violet. You can put that dark. in, and you can put any colour that you have, I'm talking about Faber now, uh, any colour you think might work to it. Best thing to do 
as I always recommend, is do it on spare paper first. Mm. If you practice those layering those initial colours first, I would, and then I'd play with the colour, play with those mm. going into it. Pick a selection, say a, a section of the picture, um, in, which in, will include the grey and the dark. You would work out very well here, um, and and practice that. Practice using those colours I've suggested, and any other you feel. But what you've got to be careful of is you must layer the colour on first, the greys on first. That neutralises any colour that you're going to put on top of it. Mm, interesting. That's not what I thought you were going to say. I thought I definitely thought there would be some kind of ochre. I didn't see those movie tints until you no, said it. No, I wouldn't put ochre on. Ochre is too fierce. It, it, would be, it would become... It's like one... If you were going to use anything at all, I'd probably uh, 283, but I would be very hesitant in doing it's that. It's too ochre is it? Yes. You're looking at, you're looking at changing the colour. You're changing the tone. You've got to be careful there. Hmm. Interesting one. OK, Barry, well, I hope that's helpful and interesting for others listening, because um, that is Just as a rider, just one thing I would also add. The background there, which we is obviously not going to use that, but if you look at the right side, the ear against the grey, got it? Yeah. Those two. Now that looks quite good. So you could use that kind of tone, which would be again um, 230, 233. And you then could add a little, maybe 181 into there as well, to give you slightly Did different. Did you add any of those 169s mm. or 194 in it? Uh, 169, no. Well, I say no, give it a try. But you certainly need something as well as those greys. The, the, the important thing is you put the grey in first. That's what I would do. Because the contrast between the ear and that grey on the right-hand side is, is pretty good. Mm. Good. Great advice. Thanks, Dad. Uh, thanks, Barry. Let us know how you get on. The next one that's come in, I'm just going to pull that up, is from Jeff. And Jeff says, this is my first attempt at a portrait. Uh, he's using uh, Faber's pit pastel pencils on pastel map. And he sent in the his picture and the original reference photo. So those are on screen now for you guys. Um, he says, I'm never sure about doing a background just in case I mess things up. So I thought if I put up, pull up both the pictures for your dad, you can have a look at sure. Jeff's work and then what he would do for the background. It's a really lovely picture. It is. He's done really well. Um, what would you suggest with something like this? Because the, the picture itself is very sepia. Yes, you can and he's done quite a shadowy picture. So what? Forget that completely. Forget the picture background. You, don't, you can't put that on. You've got to work on the colours you've already got. And what I would certainly do there, I'm not absolutely sure what the grey is used. He's is obviously used a couple of greys, mm. or three greys there. Whether it was 273 or whether it was 230. And... Two, three, three. See what I mean? Yeah. So it would be 270 or... 273 or 272. Or two, that's two, right. Three, yeah. and, or 230 and 233. Either or. Now, whichever one he's used there, he's got to use the same thing in the background. Right. So if it was, say, let's go for the 230 for the moment. You put the 230 all round, all over the background. Every, every inch of it. And then you add the 233 to that. And then if you need to, you could also add um, a little of the darker colour. I don't know what that would be. It might be 175 is used. Or he may have just used black. I don't know. Um, but he, he does need to darken it slightly, but not too much. Something like, look, if we were looking at the side of the nose there, right, the left side of the nose where the shadow is, Look in the deep part of that shadow. That would be the colour I would use all over. Right. So whatever Jeff used as a combination to get those, yes, replicate that on yes. the background. Yes. And the other thing I would do, if I were him, is I would lose the bottom of the picture that he's got there. In other words, I would fade that. There's plenty of examples where I had smudged the two together. To do that, he would have to use a slightly darker colour. That would either be the 275, if he's used that, or 181. I'm not sure what he's used there, but whatever he's used, 
that would be the colour that could add to the 233. Right, just to merge that. Yes. It, it in that area, it. merge that and then mm. blur it a little bit. And if he does that, he's almost certainly going to have to put some of that colour in the background in places. Best thing to do is look at pictures I've done already. And I've done plenty of them where I've used that system. Don't even think about putting any ochres in there. Mm. It's going to spoil it. It's interesting when Jeff says about he's always worried about doing backgrounds and I remember you've spoken about before with backgrounds when people are starting out especially to stick with just a couple of colours mm -hmm. and just stick with a couple of base colours that mm -hmm. you've used in the picture Absolutely. and just put that all over. Well, as I say, the 233 and the 230 and the 233 would be ideal to even if you just put 230 all over and left it at that. Mm. That would look better than it's got at the it moment. Covers, it covers the paper That's right. and then harmonises the picture with its mm. background. Look at two, look at the eyes. It's the eyes that are so important on any portrait. Uh, by putting those colours I've suggested in, would bring out the colour of the eyes. Uh, interesting. Great. Great stuff. That's all right. It's, it's been a pleasure to do it. And it, and as a first portrait, I've got to say, it's done a brilliant job of that. Yeah, it's very... Can I make a slight suggestion, though? If we look at the hairline on top of the forehead, right? Yeah. It, it would suggest, if you look at that, that she's wearing a wig. Agree? Looks like a wig. Yeah. Now the reason it looks like a wig is if you look at the, the other portrait on the other side, you see there's a very slight blending and emerging of colours going in there. And Around the hairline? Around, just the hairline, yeah. Mm. And if, she, if he was to do that, and again, we've got so many examples on the internet, uh, on, the, on the website where I've, I've done this. Uh, all you need to do there is put just a little bit of the colour. Let's, look, let's, let's assume it was 233. 233, um, again, the, the, against the black and the light colour, go in between the two, and then use colour shaper to just blend it. those together. And you'll find you'll get... Look at the other picture that, that we're looking at here, and constantly look at that when you're... you're um, you're doing the picture because there's no there's it, there's obviously not a wig. You can see that it's not a wig because it, it hasn't got any sharp line. Yeah. But it, on the right hand side you can see a very sharp line, can't you? Mm. But it's not on the, the portrait of the uh, photograph. So you're creating that sort of ambiguity by blurring it and fading it a little bit so yeah. that there's it, to be honest, it's so easy to do. I really don't understand why people don't do it. Probably because they don't see it. Yeah. Oh, so often we hear from from the students, and they say, they they you know their partners or someone will go, they will be able to spot things because they've been doing the picture and they don't see them because no, they've been they looking at it so often. And they'll probably they'll probably say, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't look right to me. Mm. They wouldn't know what it was. But you do now. Mm. Well, it's a good lesson for, you know, it's why these podcasts are so handy for, for others as well. You know, they can watch this and all those that are listening and watching that, you know, do portraits, they can be aware of that mm, in the future. Very much so. so. It's, a, it's a big, as I've said to you many times before, the portraits are so interesting to do, but so few people do them mm. because they're hard. You've got to get the likenesses for one thing. Mm. And um, I think I think he's done a brilliant job of that. I've got to say. Yeah, yeah. Well done, well done, Jeff. Okay, fantastic. Well, let us know how you get on with that, Jeff. Let's show us the finished picture. We'd love to see it. Um, and if anyone else has any questions about pictures they're doing, anything that we can help with, um, then just let us know. Get in touch with us. Um, you have done a new picture, but I think we'll save that to next week. That's a, that's a portrait still. That's a portrait. Not so quite the same, but it's a, it's a shadow portrait. Theme theme for portraits recently. Um, so, yeah, we'll discuss that next week. Um, we'll be hopefully back on video. And, um, yeah, we'll leave it there. So thank you, everyone, for watching and for listening this week. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. 
enjoy your week. We get that perfect. Easier to time it when you're next to each other, isn't it?